Um, my name is Nick Bradshaw. I'm currently working for Marvel Comics. Um, when I broke into the industry, I tried to publish independently. This would have been back in 2000. Um, I was just starting to get work out on the internet, on the web. And uh, I was lucky enough that a publisher had seen it, and it was for Dynamic Forces for the Army of Darkness comics, which was a lot of fun. Um, and then uh, it just sort of burgeoned into a career at DC Wildstorm, and then after that it moved on to working for Marvel. So I tend to lean more towards the more cartoony illustrators. I, I was a huge fan of Michael Ringo, Michael Golden, Alex Toth, Ed McGuinness, Arthur Adams, of course, is one of my hugest influences. I've always been a big fan of Arthur's work. It's something I always gravitate towards. To, you know, but I mean, Wally Wood, some of the old classic guys like Mark Schultz, I'm, I was a huge fan of those guys. Sure, if I had to describe my style, I've got sort of an animation, more cartoony illustrative style. I worked in animation for about four years, so for me, that's where I did my studies, and then I just ventured into doing comics after that. Well, see, I'm, I'm a big nerd. I, I love movies. I'm a huge fan of old classic horror movies. Um, so working on Army of Darkness, which was material I was a big fan of, it was great to sort of start my career on that and then Danger Girl was scary for me because I wasn't very good at drawing women at that time so it was sort of like jumping in the water and learning to swim for me I really I broke a lot of my bad habits working on that book which was a lot of fun and then it uh, it sort of prepped me for a lot of the work that came after so and I had a really good editor on that book Scott Doonbeer who's working at IDW right now uh, he was I got great guidance from him so and it sort of showed me that you always want to improve so that's why those projects really meant a lot to me to start off on so I always look to those as sort of my basic beginnings I really appreciated those projects I don't have cable so I'm gonna be downloading that I shouldn't say that but anyway I'll buy it on blu-ray when it comes out <laughs> When I was a kid, New Mutants was a big thing for me. I really appreciated the X-Men in the 80s, big adventure, high adventure. And what was fun was, was playing with New Mutants for a new generation. So that's what I had a lot of fun with working on that book. So when I look back to that, what was fun for me was sort of taking these characters that didn't have a lot of back history and creating personalities around them. We really enjoyed that. And Jason's scripts were just off the wall. You know what I mean by that? Like just really crazy adventure, like Wolverine taking kids to a casino in space or battling a bunch of zombie clowns. Like as soon as I was getting scripts in for this, I was like, I get to illustrate this, you know? Like, and for me, that's what I took away from it. It was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun on that board. Me and Jason were both uh, kids from the 70s and 80s. Like he and I would sort of joke around about doing like classic man thing or doing some of those, you know, books from like uh, Moon Knight and you know like that from the 70s that's the kind of books that we grew up on when we first started so we would always end up talking about that stuff and then have like a five minute conversation about Wolverine and the X-Men it's one of the fun things about Jason is, is everything that you need to illustrate in a book is right there in his script so whenever we did discuss stuff, it was sort of like, what do we want to work on next? What type of stuff, where do we want to bring these characters? And it's kind of fun when you're working with a writer that's thinking that far ahead. For me, it's just the work. Like, I, you know, they label you as like this Marvel young gun or whatever, but for me, it's just this thing that I'm getting interesting projects that are put my way. Like right now, I'm working on an all-ages Spidey book that they're going to be interpreting in different languages all over the world. And it's reintroducing, a new, you know, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, to a new generation. So I'm having a lot of fun with that right now. So for me, it's getting those projects, being offered those projects, which is, you know, it's very humbling, and it's a lot of fun. It's like. I'm so happy to be working on books that are just a blast. Like, I get up every morning and I can't wait to start taking pen to paper. Oh, oui, oui, j'ai déjà commencé avec Spider-Man. J'ai fini comme uh, les premières trois, quatre issues. Donc, après uh, Wolverine Pete the X-Men, j'ai travaillé sur Guardians of the Galaxy pour comme cinq ou six issues. Et après ça, c'est Spider-Man. J'ai travaillé sur Spider-Man, so... Again, what we're doing is uh, they want to put it in continuity. So the way it's going to work is we're going to be sort of reinventing Peter Parker's back history that's going to coincide with what they're doing in Amazing Spider-Man. So you'll see how this Peter Parker grew up. And what's fun about it is, is every issue, it's not going to be bogged down with continuity 
You're not going to have story carry over issue to issue. It's going to go old school. All the stories will be Peter Parker having a different adventure every issue. You know, and it's it's a lot of fun. It's written by Robbie Thompson. He's one of the producers on that television show, Supernatural. You familiar with his work? And uh, he kind of gets how to do that serialized story about it. So we, we got Peter Parker fighting Doc Doc, classic Sandman, Vulture, like every issue. So it's gonna it's fun. Not at all. It's it's not it's not like the ultimate. So what we're doing is we're going back to the classic designs. We're going back to, you know, telling that story of nerd Peter Parker, you know, like the geeky Peter Parker who gets beat up all the time. But, you know, like we're trying to get back to that sort of heart feel of the character. It's it's really a lot of fun. Oh, the Hulk. I actually told Marvel Comics I would illustrate a Hulk book for free if they had let me, but it still hasn't come that way, so someday. <laughs> yeah. I'd have to say it would have to be Warren Ellis. And one of the reasons it would have to be Warren Ellis is because as much as I love his material, I would love for him to sit there and just be able to understand how he can get it out of his head and on paper as cleanly as he does. I would love to know how the hell that man puts a script down for me. Merci. Bienvenue.